So uh, welcome to my channel and uh, welcome to my ham shack. I wanted to uh, invite you to join me on a, an adventure, on a bit of travel. Uh, we're not going to travel to a destination, however, but we're going to be traveling to a thing. This thing right here. This is an RF power amplifier, the uh, RFkit.de uh, RF2K Plus power amplifier. This is mine, but I have a second one that I'm going to be building uh, for K1CAL. And so please come along for the ride. So here we are down in the workshop and what we have on the table uh, is the material necessary uh, to build the amplifier. And the very first thing that you're going to want to do when building an amplifier is join the uh, B26 group on groups.io. And there you will find in the files sections all of the information you need to build the amplifier, including assembly instructions and alignment instructions, which I've printed out and, and put together in this notebook. So let's take a look on the table and uh, see what we're looking at. So here, of course, is the RF2K Plus amplifier. You can see the power deck on the back right-hand side, the uh, control board with the uh, Arduino computer already mounted on it there at the uh, front right. Uh, on top over here is the uh, antenna tuner, and below the antenna tuner, which might be a little difficult to see, are the uh, bandpass filters, the low-pass filters for the various bands. On the front panel is the display screen uh, where you hook up also the uh, on-off switch and uh, there are some locations for fans. We'll get into that uh, in just a little bit. Along with the accessories that are now provided, we have a, a power cord there on the left which was provided by K1CAL, a USB cable, a fan extension cable which is new from when I built my amplifier, um, the uh, Teflon coax for making the RF interconnections, and Cal has provided some fans, two 120 millimeter, millimeter fans uh, for cooling the PA deck, uh, and I believe it's a 60 millimeter fan for cooling the uh, antenna tuner, and a Raspberry Pi 3 in the back, which will be utilized. And uh, here are the assembly instructions. So let's get to it. The uh, major assembly tasks consist of testing and mounting three cooling fans, mounting the Raspberry Pi computer and interconnecting uh, it with uh, the cables provided, constructing and installing four co coaxial cables for RF interconnection, and drilling and tapping four holes in order to mount the case. So before I begin the actual assembly, I want to test some of the component parts and uh, learn uh, about airflow on the fans. I have a 12 volt DC power supply which I'm using to power uh, this fan and I've determined that the uh, power leads indeed are the black and the red and the yellow is not used and I've also determined uh, the airflow of the fan and I've marked it with an arrow on the top. That'll help me when I'm assembling this to uh, cool the PA deck. Installation of the fans is discussed on page 11 of the instruction manual. The fans use pulse width modulation to control their speed, so only two wires are necessary. It's important that you make sure you install the connectors on the controller board in the proper orientation. It's also important that you note the uh, direction of airflow of the fans so you get the proper cooling effect. In order to mount the inner cooling fan for the PA deck, I've actually pulled the PA deck out. This is probably not required. And in fact, the instruction manual says you can mount the inner fan using only three uh, screw or only two screws rather on the top. Uh, but I've elected to install it using all four screws. Uh, hopefully, this will prevent vibration. Uh, and these are 30 millimeter long, three millimeter screws. And in addition, the exterior fan, we have to extend the power lead. But they are now providing a little extension, uh, so it was very easy to modify 
uh, the cable and we'll solder that up and put some heat shrink on it and get ready to go. After you have extended the uh, fan's leads, you can loosely position it uh, at the back. The power leads run underneath the PA deck and out toward the front. The third fan, an 80 millimeter fan, is easiest to install by removing first the antenna tuner board and the fan will mount in this opening here and be connected to an output pin on the board behind there. So the next step in the instructions is to install the Raspberry Pi. Uh, the Raspberry Pi is one that you can buy from uh, Amazon or from other another uh, dealer and they give us a micro SD card uh, which fits in the bottom uh, of the Raspberry Pi. For this uh, step it's probably easiest to take the front panel off just with four screws. Here you can take a look and you can see the uh, fan mounted uh, for the uh, low pass filters and the antenna tuning unit and you can see some of the connections on the control board uh, for the fans as well. So next up I'll mount the uh, Raspberry Pi in there and make the uh, interconnections. And here's a look up inside the amplifier with the Raspberry Pi mounted in place on its four standoffs and all of the interconnections, an uh, Ethernet connector, three USB connectors, an HDMI connector uh, are all coming from the Raspberry Pi. So the next step in the process is to build and install the RF interconnection cables. And uh, this is discussed in the appendix uh, of the assembly manual. This is largely just a job that takes some time and some patience as you construct the cables, uh, first uh, the clearing the inner conductor, then the, uh, the outer shield, uh, and getting the cable to look like you want it to look. It's nice if you have a, a vise or something you can hold the cable in uh, while you're tinning the cables. And in the end, you should have four RF interconnection cables, and then how you hook them up is discussed in the assembly manual. Here's a photo of the uh, antenna tuning unit. Sorry for the glare, but the input and output lines and the connections uh, in the lower left-hand corner here, you're going to want to use a large soldering iron to lay some solder onto the solder traces. And here's a gimmick connection where you connect a short SMA cable to one of the ends of the cables. Here's a little closer look. Uh, this is also outlined in the assembly manual. You're doing this because you want to be able to connect up uh, to the uh, input and output of the uh, antenna switch without using the PA deck. So welcome back to the ham shack. Uh, you can see by my uh, <laughs> sweat, it's been a little warm uh, out here in the workshop. Uh, but we uh, have gone through the steps that you've seen so far, and uh, we're ready for the big moment of truth, the first power-up. Uh, we've double-checked our connections. Uh, we uh, believe everything is uh, the way it should be. Uh, we've run a temporary 240-volt uh, power lead here into the shop. Uh, I'm going to plug it in at the next moment here, and then we will turn on the power switch on the B26RF2K Plus amplifier for the first time. So stand by just a second. Okay, we are plugged in. Let's see if we can turn it on. I'm leaving the protector on the on the front screen here. It flashes. We have a color test pattern. We have the Raspberry Pi booting up. I will have to take the protective screen off. I just realized it's a touch screen. <laughs> I can't leave it on there. So this is the very long first boot sequence. Pardon my dogs in the background as they move around. And 
the magic smoke has not come out. And we're seeing the splash screen for the RF kit power amplifier. Arduino is now being programmed. Restart the Arduino? Sure. Relays clicked, lights are on, a low pass filter is selected. Let's go to menu. Uh, da, 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 let's see. Okay, an update is available. So let's go get the update first because I may be looking for something that's not here yet. There is an update, so the update is started. We reboot, and the latest version of software is now installing. So I'm reaching over here to grab my Diet Pepsi. We're winning. So far, so good. All the best from Whiskey for Echo Echo Yankee. Uh, we have uh, setup and uh, calibration coming up next. And setup and calibration, we don't have any video, uh, but we do have an excellent instruction manual, 14 pages, 15 steps. Uh, you need to have a transceiver with a variable RF output, a well-calibrated DVM, and a bunch of test leads with appropriate uh, probe points uh, to make uh, measurements. This was my setup, a Yaesu FTDX1200, the amplifier, some watt meters, and two MFJ Versaloads. 
Four steps to start with. You disable input protection and uh, LPF forward power protection by adjusting some potentiometers on the control board. Uh, the control board is indicated in the appendix with this pictorial and also with a photograph that shows you where the, the uh, potentiometers are located. To set up the uh, voltage, you uh, have a DVM monitoring the PA voltage, and then you make sure that the uh, front panel display corresponds. You disable PA bias by adjusting these two jumpers and moving them toward the rearward uh, position toward the LDMOS uh, devices. You test your coax wiring to make sure that everything is one-to-one uh, -one SWR. In fact, I used my uh, rig expert and actually swept uh, the line. Uh, then you can calibrate the frequency con detector by using a 28 megahertz signal from your transceiver and uh, you find an error message uh, from that or an error offset. Then you test the low pass filter section. You want to test it both in universal mode and cat mode. You want to make sure that the band pass filters change with frequency. And then you calibrate the SWR bridge. And I had to add some test points. You can see here the little wires sticking up so that I could get my probe to uh, uh, correspond to, to the pins and then here's the location of the various potentiometers. You calibrate forward and reflected power uh, using uh, the potentiometers and you calibrate frequency compensation using a variable capacitor. You calibrate the antenna tuner gain using the debug mode and making an adjustment on a potentiometer and to do this you must uh, create a 2 to 1 dummy load uh, by uh, paralleling two 50 ohm loads into a 25 ohm load here on my rig expert. You calibrate the low pass filters forward power protection and this is an important point. Uh, you need to do this using um, a measurement uh, at one of the integrated circuit chips at pin 5. Well to get to pin 5 you need to have a special probe that can get in close uh, and this is what I used on a scope probe and you can see it here uh, on pin 5 of this particular IC. That's probably the most difficult step. You calibrate the input power display. This uh, gives you a visual indication of your drive level uh, using a potentiometer on the control board. And then you also calibrate the amperage meter, the uh, current display. Uh, you do this by opening up the uh, PA circuit. You uh, enable the bias again uh, for the PA devices and then you uh, read the reading on your DVM and make sure that the display reads the same. There's a current limiting that uh, is adjusted using a potentiometer on the debug screen and then you repeat some steps at full power level. Here is the amplifier producing 1500 watts on 7 megahertz uh, indicated here on the LP100A uh, power meter and also indicated on the front panel display. Interestingly, at uh, full power, uh, the device draws 11.7 amperes uh, from my 240 volt uh, AC uh, supply circuit. So all in all, this was a really big success. I'm very happy to have built this second amplifier. And here it is in the QTH of K1CAL, Cal Harris. Cal, enjoy the amplifier and hope to work you many times on the air. 73 y'all from Whiskey 4, Echo, Echo Yankee.